had an awesome weekend with your family. Hey, get up, let's worship together this morning. Our good morning, China. Wherever you're at in your house, in your car, wherever you're listening to us, just stand to your feet or turn that radio up and get ready to praise Jesus this morning. Let praise be the weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be the weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. So let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall, we'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high with all creation. the storm inside of me let's let it rise let faith arise we'll see you break down every wall we'll watch the giants fall who cannot survive when we praise you the God of breakthroughs on our side forever lift him sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you we'll see you break down every wall we'll watch the giants fall you cannot survive when we praise you the god of breakthroughs on our side forever lift him high with all creation crying god Praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. We cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation crying, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. I gotta let it out. I 
this morning, God. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. I raise a hallelujah. In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is Sing a little louder. 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 Louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. 
Jesus while we sing a little In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The key is alive I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arise, death is defeated, the king is alive. I raise a hallelujah. worship you this morning, Jesus. I've tried so hard to see it. it took me so long to believe it. You choose someone like me carry your victory perfection could never earn it to give what we don't deserve and you take the broken things and raise them to glory you are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place. Undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. Now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving cease For this is my victory You are my champion Giants fall when you stand on Every battle you won, I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seen in the heavenly place, undefeated, with the one who has conquered it all. has given me when 
Thank you for freedom. You were worthy of it all. God, we have freedom today because of you, Jesus, dying on the cross for us. We have freedom today. God, you are so good. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, thank you that your word says in 2 Corinthians 3.17, it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. God, we know that you're here. We know that you're there. Freedom is here. Thank you, God, for freedom today. We believe that we are free. We believe that we are free free from addiction, free from depression, free from a virus, free from anything that's coming against us. God, we believe that we are free because you are here. Thank you, Jesus, for that. We worship you this morning. We worship you together this morning. And we give you all the glory and all of the honor because, God, you are worthy of it all. Thank you, Jesus. All of triumph, we worship you together today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, Triumph Church. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Man, wasn't worship good? God is so good. That's one of my favorite things to do is worship my God. My name is Sam, and I get the honor to serve here as the youth pastor. If you're a guest with us here, please leave a like, leave a comment down below. Here at Triumph Church, we are all about knowing God, finding freedom, discovering our purpose, and then making a difference in our community. I want to challenge you, just, just do that this weekend, 4th of July weekend. Do those things in your family, in your community. Genesis 8.22, it says, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest never cease. Never cease. That's a promise that we can take to the bank. God will always come through for us. We know that. There's actually three ways that you can give today. The first way is do it through the Triumph Angleton app. Really easy. Download the app. Give through the online or through the app. It's really easy. Second way you can give is that you can drop it off right here at the church. We're here throughout the week. Come by, drop it off, say hi. The third way that you can give is you can give at 12, you can mail it to 1280 Hospital Drive, Angleton, Texas. Hey, let me encourage you. Listen, this is a great opportunity for you to listen Get fed the Word of God. Pastor Ryan has a great word for you today. Please. He's actually starting a new series. It's called Summer at Triumph. So get ready. Good morning, Triumph. I am excited to be with you on this 4th of July weekend. It is Independence Weekend, and there's no way to be more free than to celebrate Jesus today. I'm excited to be with you online. I know some of you were disappointed we're not having church live and in person, but uh, our numbers are truly going up in our county, and I want to do what's best uh, for you and for our church. And if anyone were to get sick, I would feel guilty. I would feel bad, and, and, and we don't want to do that. We prayed, we saw God, and we felt like it was wise uh, to cancel earlier in the week. So that's what we did. And so we're online today coming live straight to you uh, from Trump this morning. And we love you and we're praying for you and we believe God's going to do great things in your life. So happy 4th of July. I hope you're enjoying it with your family. I hope you're sitting on your patio and enjoying all the freedoms that we have um, because of the great country uh, that we live in. And so we're, we're excited. We'll reevaluate here in a few weeks whether we have church. So we're thinking towards the end of July we'll go back to church and we'll be excited to do that. But until then, 
watch with us 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock online. You miss me at 9 o'clock, you can watch me at 11 o'clock. And, and I'm going to tell you a secret now. I really want you to tune in at 9 and 11, but if you miss the, both of those, you can come back at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Go to the Facebook page, go to the YouTube page, and you can watch there too. And so we're just excited to be with you. So wherever you are in your house, get comfortable, get your water, get your pad and paper, get ready to take notes, because I believe God has given me a message for you this morning. Let us pray real quick. Father, we just thank you for who you are today. I thank you, Father, what you want to do in the church. You're doing it in our church through our people because they are the church. I just want to thank you, Father, for their faithfulness. I want to thank you, Father, for how good you are. We're thankful in every situation. We're thankful right in the middle of COVID-19. We give you all the thanks and all the glory because we still know that in this earth you are moving and you are setting people free today, even while they're watching on their iPads, they're watching on their phones, or they're watching on their computers or their TVs, Father. We know you are still in total control. We worship you. We praise you. We thank you for who you are. And we think that today is an outstanding day to be free in you. And we love you today. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are. We give you all the praise and all the glory to your name. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Everybody at home, say it with me. Amen. And so I'm excited to be with you today. I have a message I've entitled, He Has the Whole World in His Hands. You know that He has the whole world in His hands. He knows everything. Nothing surprises God. I tell you that all the time. And it doesn't. But I want to give you some things to think about today. Not to scare you, but to prepare you. You know, when life is uncertain, God is not. Sometimes we just got to pray till peace comes into our life. In fact, uncertainty is God's favored environment. That's my belief anyway. It seems, I think, I think it seems that he gets the most accomplished when there's times of uncertainty. Sometimes uncertainty creates fear and insecurity. and It's when he gets an individual's undivided attention. It's when he gets a nation's undivided attention. Uh, people repent of their sins and, and values are are kind of reshuffled, and, and what import, what's really important in life shoots to the top of our priority list, and, and we feel our dependence on God and on each other, and we, we start to lean more on God and not our own understanding when we can't understand things that are happening. And, and so I want to ask you today, how many of you found or returned to God or returned to your faith during a, different, a difficult uh, or a different environment uh, than a normal environment in your life. If you're at home today, just raise your hand with me. I can't see you. I, I see hands going up on the screens by faith right now because I know that it was a difficult moment in my life when I rededicated it to Jesus and found him in a new way. In fact, most of what we were given in Scripture was written in environments of uncertainty by people who, who face extraordinary challenges. The Bible's not filled with feel-good messages for a world we don't live in. It, it's filled with messages for the world we live in and for the difficulties that we go through. In fact, we find God speaking directly to us in uncertain times. We see His hand in the midst of uncertainty. You can pick your favorite Bible character, your, your favorite Bible story, and, and in the midst of finding these guys... Uh, you, you'll, find, you'll find God right in the middle of that uncertainty and that difficult time. You can look at what's going on in their life. You can look at what's going on in the circumstances that surround them. And It's not about rich people having fun. That's not what the Bible's about. It's a book of people with faults that God used. Every single person in this book has a fault. If we start looking at people who, 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 who had faults in their lives and, and we decided that we were going to get rid of those people, we'd have to get rid of every single person just about except for Jesus that's in this book because every single person had faults. The Bible's filled with stories of people facing uncertainty and discovering that not only is God not absent, He's often diligent and at work accomplishing His will in this world and in the lives of those who He loves. We're reminded of how much God is really in control and how much we really are not in control. So, so why do we worry? Why do we panic? Why do we overact? None of these things are really productive. So what should we do? Today we'll hear from an expert. 
I brought an expert out of the Word of God to speak to us today. We're going to look at Paul's life. If you're not a Christian, this is going to sound unrealistic, even crazy. But I'm glad you're here to hear it online today. I want to share my heart with you. Because uncertainty sometimes drives us into self-destructive relationships and destructive directions. And I want you to know that there's a real alternative to these things. So turn with me today to Philippians 4.4. 4. Now context is extremely uh, important. This is a letter to the Christians in Philippi, the first church in Europe. The letter is written from Paul from Rome. See, Paul had been arrested in Jerusalem. Not all Paul's life was fun. So he was arrested in, in Jerusalem. And he claims to be a Roman citizen, which forced them to send him to Rome for trial. Now Nero was the emperor of Rome. And on the way to Rome from Jerusalem, his ship is called in a storm and swept out to sea for two weeks. It wrecks on an island we know of that's called Malta. It's where they spend three months. And God assures him during this three months that he will stand before Nero. He arrives in Rome and he lives under house arrest for at least what we know is at least two years, probably longer. And there he, as he's in, in house arrest, as he's confined, he still draws crowds that come to hear him teach. We know of these crowds, there's people that are still saved and people that are still set free. We know that Paul was beheaded on the Osan Road several miles outside of Rome around A.D. 61 through 66. And while he's there, he wrote the following passage of Scripture that we're going to read today in Philippians 4.4 4 through 7. In this passage, it says these words, Rejoice in the Lord always, and I will say it again, rejoice. Then Paul says these words, let your gentleness be evident to all. You know, it's when things get rough in our life that sometimes we don't speak in a gentle way. It's when things get rough in our life that sometimes we don't act inside the character of what God has called us to be. But the truth is, Paul sets the standard, and he sets the bar high in this moment, and he says, let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, every single situation in your life, by prayer and petition, and Paul says these words, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, you want the peace of God in your life? This is how you do it. Prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Even in the midst of when everything's falling apart, when everything's going wrong, you're thankful. Say, so God, I rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. In the midst of turmoil, in the midst of trial, in the midst of everything in your world falling apart. He says in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God. You need the peace of God in your life? This is how it happens. We need to be in a state of happiness and well-being. We need to be glad always. He says rejoice always. What kind of drugs were they taking back then? What's going on in the Scriptures at this point in time? Paul's in prison. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. It's not a drug. It's not a false hope. It's not a sense of this will make things better. Because Paul knew the Creator, the Arthur, and the finisher of his fate. And he knew what would make the situation better. And it was only God that would. Paul knew the secret. In fact, he says, rejoice always. And if he'd have said rejoice, just said rejoice always. Uh, the in the Lord part wouldn't have been there. We could just close the book and, and just move on. But there's three words in the middle of him saying rejoice. And I will say it again. 
He says, rejoice in the Lord always. The three words, in the Lord. The word in in the Greek is in or ev. It's the cause. It's the location. It's the fixed position of which Paul operated. He says, you've got to be in the Lord. In other words, Paul says, I know what my position is. I know who my God is. I know who the cause of what I do and what I've got to do. I know what the cause is. And then it's, the Lord is curious, supreme in authority. He goes, I know who my authority is. In fact, I'm so fixed in my position of who God is in my life, I can rejoice In the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. He knew who God was in his life, and it excited him. It was a position that he took that no matter what was going on, no matter what was happening, no matter what it looked like, no matter whether he was sentenced to death, no matter what was about to happen, he had took a stance that I will rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Do you believe he is in complete control of your life? Best way to understand this may be to substitute the terms and say, and this is how we would say it, we'd rejoice when we got a raise or we got a bonus or we got engaged or, or we made a sale or, or we, we graduated or we got a scholarship. That's when we rejoice in life. But Paul's saying, don't rejoice just when it's easy. Don't rejoice just when the Cowboys win the Super Bowl. Don't rejoice when the Texans win a Super Bowl if they ever do. All that stands in stark contrast to Paul's circumstances and your circumstances in your life. We have to reflect on on God's goodness and His mercy in our lives until our emotions catch up with that reality. See, because it's by faith that we breathe and we live and we move. It's by faith that we can look at the circumstance and say, you know what? I know who my God is. You know what? I know that He did it once. He can do it again. I know that He saved me once and forgave me. He'll forgive me again. I know who my God is. It's why we sing on Sunday mornings. It's why we cheer at baptisms. It's why we're allowed to cheer at our home and in our car and at work. And No matter what's going on, we just give praise to God. We have to detach our emotions from our surroundings and bend them into the direction of God's mercy and grace in our life. We have to let our gentleness, like Paul said, gentleness be evident to all. Don't let uncertainty take a toll on your character. The way you treat and you respond to others is your character. And if you get wrapped up in bad circumstances and things and looking at everything that's going on in the world, if you get wrapped up in what the 6 o'clock and the 10 o'clock news is saying in your life, it can change the character of what God has called you to be. Don't let uncertainty take its toll on your character. We have to watch how we treat others and how we respond. Kindness is a fruit of the Spirit. Often our kindness is a marketing tool or the overflow of things going our way. Paul says this, now is when all people will discover what's really inside of who you are. Let it shine to all. This is what Paul is saying. This is the time of which everyone will see what is really in you and who you really are. When everything is going wrong, that's when people see who you really are. Has the recent uncertainties of life affected your responses to those that are around you? Has it affected your temper and your nerves? I would tell you that the Lord is near. Some of you would say, well, the Lord is near, but He ain't here. But if there's more, if our Lord is near, if He is with us and He is in us, then there's no reason to to panic and there's no reason to to, to, to get excited, and there's no reason to mistreat people. 
I want to share with you the word that Jesus gave his disciples about the end times. Open with me to Matthew 24, 3 real quick as I share this word that Jesus gave his guys real quick. And it says, as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And Jesus answered them, and he says, See that, lead, that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. And they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you aren't alarmed. See, Jesus said you need to be calm even in the midst of what's being said. For this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. Kingdom will rise against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. And all these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Look at this. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. As I read this this week, some of it jumped off the page, and I thought, man, this might be some of the times that we're going through in our life. Should I be scared? No. Should I worry? No. Why? Because the peace of God is still having it. God is still on the throne. He still knows my footsteps, and He still walks with me and talks with me, and He still calls me by my name. See, Jesus preached, and He preached loud. And I want to caution you. Say, well, you know, Jesus would have told them the truth. No, not necessarily. See, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, I almost said the Pharisees, but the Pharisees and the Sadducees, I was messing up there, forgive me, but the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they constantly messed with him nonstop. And every time they tried to trap him, he quietly dealt with them in love. See, it would have been easy for Jesus to get mad at these guys. It would have been easy for Jesus to look to the Pharisees or the Sadducees and say, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong, even when they were wrong. It would have been easy for him to do that. But he, instead, we see Jesus operates with love, and he makes statements like the statement I'm going to read to you in John 8. In John 8, 1, it says, But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives at dawn, and he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him. As they gathered around him, he sat down to teach them. And the teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery, and they made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. Here we see another person in the Word of God with a fault. So the guys come to Jesus and they say, Jesus in the law, Moses commands us to stone such women. Now what do you say, Jesus? They were using this question to trap Jesus in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus does something totally different. Jesus doesn't say you're wrong. He doesn't say you're wrong. He doesn't say you're wrong. No, what does Jesus do? Jesus bent down. And he started to write on the ground with his finger. And when they kept on, kept on questioning him, he straightened up and he said to them, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And then again, he stooped down on the ground. And at this, those who heard him began to go away one at a time. The older ones first. Until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. And Jesus straightened up again and he asked her, Woman, where are they? No one has condemned you. No, sir, she said, no one. 
Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Jesus tells the Pharisees. Jesus tells the guys who brought the woman to him. Let he that was without sin cast the first stone. He does it with compassion. He does it with love. See, society has not changed since the times of Jesus. We want gratification and instant justice. We want it now. We don't want to wait. We don't want to show compassion. We want to judge somebody's statement on Facebook instantly. That's not how Jesus operated. It's not what Jesus did. In fact, Jesus, what he did was as they're saying, and he knows they're trying to trap him, the law of Moses, Jesus, the law of Moses, they said, we've got a stoner, and we've got a stoner right now. Here, grab your rock, Jesus. Why don't you cast your rock? And instead of joining the party of, of accusations, instead of joining the party of what's going on, of let's just, let's just kill her, and let's just judge her instantly, no, Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus has compassion. No, Jesus gets down and he kneels down, and he begins to write in the sand. Who knows what he wrote? He writes in the sand and he writes something in the sand and he, he sits back up and he said, let he that without sin cast the first stone. And then he goes back and he writes something down and it said the older Pharisees begin to leave first. Maybe he started with the older Pharisees. Maybe he wrote, well, there's George here and George, you know what your sin is and he might start started listening. We don't know what he, what he did. But all we know is he did it quietly. He did it without judging them. And, and he did it out of love. See, the truth is, so many times in life, we want to jump on the bandwagon and we want to grab our rocks. And we want to chunk them at somebody. And we want to get mad. But that's not what God did. See, Jesus showed compassion. He showed love. And then he said simple words like, go and sin no more. The very next verse, verse 12, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This is what a real 4th of July looks like. This is what fireworks should look like. They should light up with the light of life. See, you've never experienced a party until you, you, you discover who the light of the world is. And, and, and you start following Jesus and you have the light of life. That's what we need in our lives. If we're true followers, we have to operate in love, not judgment. We must watch our words. Sometimes saying less, we can say more. Paul tells Timothy this in 2 Timothy 3.1. He said, you know, you should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. In fact, they will consider nothing sacred. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what it was built on. They'll consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. I want you to remember this word, unforgiving. Truth is, so many times in our, in our lives, most of the problems that we have are because of unforgiveness. And, and, and then Paul tells Timothy, they will slander others. They'll have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends. They'll be reckless. They'll be puffed up with pride. And they will love pleasure rather than God. In fact, they'll act religious, Timothy but they will reject the power that could make them godly. And then Paul says these words, stay away from people like that. Stay away. See, the problem is we're always trying to be right. And see, when you're always trying to be right, you're going to end up being wrong. It's just how life works. It couldn't be more simple. See, you see that comment on Facebook that sets you ablaze and makes you mad? Stay away. Don't, don't touch that comment. Just leave it alone. Leave it where it is. You don't have to respond. Well, you do, but your response should be prayer. Why would you see a situation 
that is on fire and think it's a good idea to walk up close to that situation and throw gasoline on it. The only thing that's going to happen if you throw gasoline on that situation is you're going to lose your eyebrows and you're going to lose the argument. That's what happens in life when we throw gas on the fire. I've done it before. I've walked over to my barbecue pit. I put the charcoal lighter on it, put it on it, and threw a match down there. I'm like, huh, why didn't it light? And all of a sudden, boof, eyebrows gone. In fact, I really don't have a receding hairline. It was just I got too close to the fire one too many times. It burned it off. There's people every day, they leave church because there are sinners there. Well, that's more, reason of, that's more of a reason to stay than to leave. In fact, we should learn how to pray for people instead of judge people. And we should learn how to pray for people and to tell our brothers and sisters that we love them. Even when they're doing something you don't like, show love. Romans 14.1, I love the way it says it in the Message Bible. It says it like this, and this is what we really should do. It says, welcome with open arms fellow believers who don't see things the way you do. In other words, there's going to be people that don't see things the way you do. Welcome them with open arms. And don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't agree with. Even when it seems that they are strong on opinions. You know some people that are strong on opinions? I know some. It says, when they're strong on opinions but weak in the faith department, remember, they have their own history to deal with. Treat them gently. They've got their own history to deal with. Why are you judging them? You're not God. I'm not God. I don't get the right to judge them. Instead, we treat them with love. Remember, they have their own history to deal with. You've never walked a mile in their shoes, darling. Never. And you aren't holy enough to pick up that stone that should have been thrown at you years ago and chunk it at somebody else. But the reason the stone wasn't thrown at you is because of Jesus, because of the grace of God. The reason you haven't had to pay the penalty for your faults in your life is because of the goodness of God. Maybe you need the grace of God in your life today. Maybe you have unforgiveness in your heart today. Maybe you're just tired today, tired of caring, tired of caring stuff. Jesus will gladly take all of that off of your hands. The worst thing we can do is carry unforgiveness. The worst thing that we can do in life is carry debts of sin in our lives. Remember what I started the message off with today? God has the whole world in his hands. Your simple burdens and your simple problems aren't too big for him to carry away from you. If he can hold the whole world in your hands, he can take your sin away too. In fact, he already did it. It's already been paid for. He went to the cross at Calvary and paid for every one of your sins. He's just waiting for you to accept it. The problem is we carry it around and we don't give it to him. He's already paid the price. All we have to do is receive it. All we have to do is say, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. You might say, well, pastor, what's going on in our country? He's just got me stirred up. In fact, I read posts and it's got me mad. And I watch this political party or this political party. We ain't called to be a part of a political party. We're called to be part of the church of the resurrected king. We're called to be, be part of the church of Jesus Christ. He is still our Lord. He is still our Savior. He is still our Redeemer. Don't get caught up in the things of this world. Get caught up in Jesus and have the peace that Paul said passes all understanding. Learn to walk in the reality that Jesus Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And when we come to him, that's when we can have a true independence day. That's when we can really find freedom. It's when we turn over all the weights of our world and we give them to the creator of the world. We hand them to Jesus. If that's you today and you want to give all your problems to him today, you say, Pastor, I'm just tired of it. Don't say no more. Except for Jesus. Save me. The only words that will ever set you free. The only words that will truly give you peace. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Today, if you want to rejoice, 
if you want to know where your foundation comes from, where your purpose comes from, I challenge you today, give it all to God. As you're sitting at home today, we've been praying for you. We've been believing for you this week. In fact, as I was writing this message, I was thinking about individuals in my church. Just, Lord, help them in this time of need. Lord, bless them in their time. We believe that God is for you. He is not against you. I don't care what religion you've been told in the past. God is for you. He is with you. He wouldn't have came to die for you then left you in misery. He wants you to be in a place of freedom. If that's you today, I just want you to repeat this with me. It might be the day to just surrender and say, Jesus, save me. So repeat these words with me today if that's you. Say, Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I believe that you died and rose again. I believe that you shed your blood at Calvary just so that all my sins could be wiped away. I give you the weight of my world today. I turn it over to you, the creator of the world. And I ask you to save me, to set me free, and to fill me with your sweet Holy Spirit. Give me the peace that I've lacked in life today. It's in your name I pray, the name of Jesus. I believe God is moving in your house as we speak. I believe if you'll lift up your hands, no matter the circumstances that you're going through, the peace of God will fill the room with you today. You might say, well, Pastor, I, I have some stuff going on in my body, and I need healing in my life. God can line your knee up today. He can heal your back where you're sitting today. He can remove cancer. It says in Isaiah 53 that by his stripes you are healed. All you have to do is ask. So today, if you need healing in your body, Father, we just thank you for healing them and touching them and for blessing them and giving them freedom on this 4th of July weekend. We love you for who you are today, Father. We thank you, Father, that because your Son set us free, we're free indeed. We give you all the glory and all the honor to your name today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week. Have a great holiday, the rest of your holiday weekend. Thank you for tuning in today. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday online at 9 and 11. Stay safe. Be blessed. Wear your mask. Don't, don't go against. Show Jesus. Just be the light of the world. Don't buck the system. Flow with the system and show people how to love in the midst of everything that's going on. We love you. And Pastor will see you next week right here, same time, online. Have a blessed week. Thank you.